What? Look at how nice this came out. Unbelievable. YouTube welcome back to the channel today is the day we are finally gonna get to paint the 1964 Corvette it's all cleaned up it's all taped off the booths clean we got the paint we got the clear there's nothing holding this bag so what you're gonna see in today's video is me spraying the pretty blue paint and the clear coat and then we're just gonna let it chill and dry at least for a few days before we touch it. In the next video, we're, you're gonna see us wet sanding and wheeling the clear coat, and that'll be it. It'll be time to put the car back together. So, yep, in this video, you're finally gonna see it get put back in color. We're super excited. It's gonna be a big day for us. Hopefully everything goes really well. You never know when you go to paint a car. I've been through it many times, and sometimes things hold you up like <clears throat> sometimes you can get bugs in it you can get hair in it there's all sorts of junk that can fall in it and make you stop what you're doing and you gotta let it dry you gotta sand it out and then go back and spray base coat back over it or the worst thing is to get any kind of junk in the clear coat because then it's just trapped there's nothing you can do that's a nightmare so I'm praying that today that doesn't happen and that everything goes smooth and the base goes down good, the clear goes down good, and everything goes well. So with that said, let's get into it. So the first product that we're going to be spraying on the body is going to be Shopline Sealer. And the reason we're going to use this sealer is because it gives us protection from uh, the areas that we sanded through the primer surfacer and into the bare fiberglass. So the sealer is going to give us that added protection for any problems that may come through to the base coat. We don't want any reaction problems. So the sealer is just more insurance to seal off the primer surfacer. And on top of that, we wanted to shoot the blue paint over white. The surfacer is gray. We wanted to do that so the blue paint will pop more and it'll actually be brighter to paint it over a white base coat rather than a dark gray. So that's what you're going to see us shoot first. We're going to get one heavy coat of surf. Of, I'm sorry, of sealer on there, and then we'll start in with the base coat. So let's get into it. All right, we're going to start spraying the parts first. We're going to use a primer sealer. Uh, it's white, it's shop line, and we're just going to do, spray on the small parts first and see how the texture goes on. And if it's orange peeling or whatever, we're going to we're try to reduce it or, you know, see what we can do to, to thin it out. So let's, let's see how that goes first. All right, so we did a test spray on the headlight buckets. And they came out pretty good. I don't know if you guys can see it in the reflection, but not much orange peel at all or texture. And it looks like it flowed out pretty well. So we're gonna move forward on and just spray everything else. So there was a small little spot. I don't know if you guys can see it or pick it up. There we go. That is a reaction. And that's, that is exactly why we use sealers to seal off stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that up again with another layer and hopes that that'll cover up. And if we have to, we'll just keep spraying or dusting on light coats till that disappears. And then it should be safe for the base coat to be sprayed on.
I use a sticky tack rag between every coat after it dries just to make sure that we pick up any small debris, hair, anything that we don't want to end up in the paint. So that's what this is right here.
we got the sealer sprayed on. We would have went right into spraying the base coat and the clear coat, but of course we had issues. So now we got to stop, let it dry, and wait till tomorrow. So I'll show you guys what happened and explain what, what or why we had to stop and let it dry. Let's get you turned around. Overall though, it came out really nice as you guys can see. It looks super slick with the sealer on. It's a white sealers. We wanted the white. You can either get sealer in gray, black, white. You can tint it to your body color, but we really wanted white underneath the blue to help the blue pop. So I'll give you guys a shot around the car and then I'll show you why we had to stop. It's probably hard to see on camera. It's hard to see any kind of small imperfections on the camera. It probably looks perfect, which I wish it was. But I'm used to having to stop in paint jobs because we don't have a professional paint booth. So that's just how it goes when you're, you're doing an at-home paint job. And we've gotten pretty good at it. But overall, wow, the panels look really good. Super happy with the outcome. The hood looks flawless. We really didn't have any issues on the hood. The deck lid came out really nice. And so tomorrow we'll just have to come in and scuff these with some Scotch-Brite, which is similar to like a 320 or a 400 grit. You're not gonna see those sand scratches through the paint and it'll give it that mechanical adhesion it needs to bond. So you can't just spray over dry sealer. You, you have to wait either the flash time, which is 15, 20 minutes and then spray your base coat and if you wait longer than that, you actually have to rescuff it with, like I said, some Scotch Brite or some 400 grit sandpaper. We're just gonna hit it with some Scotch Brite, repair the areas that need to be fixed, and then it should be go time again for the blue base coat. But yeah, overall, man, the car is looking really sharp. You see all the parts are in white sealer now. Just came out really nice. I don't know if you guys can pick up on it, but it's really smooth. Really no orange peel or texture at all to it. So I'll go into why we stopped. I'll show you a few of the spots. Might be kind of hard to see on camera. I'll try to zoom in on it. There's one right there. Now, what that is, they call it a fisheye. And it's actually where the paint was pushed away from whatever made it react whether it be grease, water, it could be any of those things, but it doesn't allow the paint to relax and flow out. So something got on there and made the paint push away from the panel. So all you gotta do to repair that is scuff it with some Scotch-Brite and then continue on. But it has to be dry to, to scuff it or sand it. So there's a few of those little tiny marks here and there. For some reason, it only happened on the driver's side, but it's really not a big deal. I've dealt with this for many years. This is nothing. You just, like I said, you scuff it, and then you just, we'll go, we'll go right into shooting our base coat after that. But there's, I mean, those few spots there were the only spots that happened, and that's what held us up. And then the big reason we stopped was right here. And I don't mind showing you guys my mess ups because that's just how it goes. But that is a big old fat run in the sealer. And why that happened is because the, our air compressor actually wasn't adjusted right. I didn't have my air pressure up high enough. And so when that happens, it doesn't atomize the sealer well enough. So atomize means, if you guys don't know, some of you may not, it means it doesn't put enough air and into the material and allow it to break into smaller pieces for it to actually float in the air and go on real smooth. So after that, I adjusted the air compressor up, gave it some more air pressure and the rest of the car came out great. So again, a run is not a big deal for us. I've even I've dealt with it in the past. All we have to do is let it dry till tomorrow. I'll take a stick and some 400 grit sandpaper and we'll sand that right out and we'll go right back into shooting the base coat tomorrow. So that kind of wraps up this uh, today's video and we're just gonna let this dry really well. 
let it smooth out really well, and then we'll, we'll shoot the base coat tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we're back the next day, and today we're gonna start with shooting the, the blue base coat, and then hopefully get into the clear coat if the base coat stays clean and we don't get much trash in it. So let's get into it. All right, well, we got all the base coats shot and now uh, we sprayed the clear coat and the first coat came out really nice, as you can see, flowed out really nice off the gun. And we're gonna do one to two heavy coats of clear on everything and see how that comes out. In the end, we, we ended up putting three heavy coats of clear on the car just because we didn't really want to worry about sanding through when we wet sand and wheel. 
And in general, I'm just a very heavy clear sprayer. I do, I put a lot on and I put it on wet. So really that's probably like four to six uh, layers of, you know, anybody else that's spraying it. I've just always sprayed like that, he heavy and wet. The car though came out absolutely beautiful. We love it, it very happy with it. The, the materials really came through for us and couldn't be happier with the outcome. you guys we got the 64 corvette finally all painted uh, really happy with it came out great uh, the clear flowed out really nice off the gun we had a few small things end up in it but that's just the way it goes when you're painting in a garage and not in a professional paint booth but overall super happy with the car nothing we can't handle we'll end up wet sanding it and buffing it out to perfection so i hope you guys like this video uh, make sure that you subscribe comment and uh, make sure that you guys follow the project. You go back and watch my other videos of all the hard work that we put into the car. And uh, I hope you guys can appreciate it like we do. And I'll see you guys on the next video later.